there's nothing better than a perfectly cooked seared steak. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to get the perfect sear on a steak and top it off with a delicious chimichurri served with mashed potato. First off, get the pan piping hot. As you're waiting for that to get up to temperature, make sure your steak, I've got a bone-in ribeye, make sure that's out of the fridge at least 10, 15 minutes early. Whilst you're waiting for that, a really nice season. Now, be generous on the seasoning because we lose 30% of the seasoning, especially in the searing. So, I like to get this out literally 20 minutes before I use it. Sear the fat, the bone, and sort of press all that seasoning into it. Once that steak's up to temp, now I've got the heat in my pan, I can turn down the gas and start that beautiful sear. Not too crazy on the oil. In, roll it around the seasoning, and always lay away. Always lay away from you. That way we don't splash or burn ourselves. The steak has got up to room temperature and that caramelization takes place really fast. Turn the gas down. I've got the heat in the pan already, as you can see. In there, I'm gonna add a little touch of garlic. Again, I don't even have to peel that garlic, just in, half. Now the secret here is to be patient, okay? Don't turn that steak until you need to turn it. I've got some fresh thyme in there to make it really nice and aromatic. And be generous with those herbs, because all we're doing now is imparting that amazing flavor. So, check this out. Turn that over and look at that sear. That crust is beautiful. Now we sear the other side. The temperature of that meat is still quite cold, so when you turn it over, or let's just turn the gas up a little bit to make sure we concentrate on that beautiful sear. Use your tongs and push down. Take advantage of that beautiful base, that incredible non-stick, and more importantly, the heat that's been conducted in the pan. It is so important, especially the sear, and that helps differentiate between boiling a steak and searing a steak. But look at the crust on that already. Once that has beautifully seared on the top, I go back again and just lightly season that. Fresh salt, fresh pepper. And now, a little touch more oil, just a touch on the top. I'm gonna to sear the back of that steak now. Use the side of the pan to help tilt the pan and I'll sear the back of that steak, that's really important. And those beveled parts of this beautiful pan is perfect for the circumference of that amazing ribeye. Now look, my garlic is roasting. Now I'll go with the butter. And this is where you make too many mistakes where the butter goes in too early. And more importantly, it starts to burn. I'm gonna turn down the gas now, okay, because I've got the heat in the pan. Pan's worked its magic. Gas goes down, and all I do now is add the butter and baste that beautiful steak. Tilt the pan, down, and baste. Baste, baste, baste. I'm going to sit it there, turn the gas right down, okay, and just let it beautifully caramelize and get that nice sear. That is so important. Let that rest, turn the gas off, and then just literally every two or three minutes, baste it again. Just baste. Nothing more, just baste. And so as that sits, it's absorbing all that flavor, and more importantly, it's relaxing in that beautiful heated pan. Right, chimichurri, very simple. Start off with a shallot. And this is a really nice rustic sauce. It's a beautiful sort of wake up for that nice, rich, incredible, intense flavor. I'm using a shallot, it's a lot sweeter. Red onion is perfect for this as well. But I don't like to get the sort of, the too harsh of an onion flavor. I want a really nice sweet shallot. It's sort of a really nice sauce. In with a shallot. Take your bowl to the shallots, in they go. Now, the base of this chimichurri, I've got some fresh mint, I've got some cilantro, and I've got some beautiful oregano. And roll them up like you're rolling a big cigar, and just nip it together, okay? Now, I like to slice my herbs once. If we chop them too fine, all the goodness comes out and bleeds on the board. So I go through them with a knife once, into my bowl, and the fragrance sits in the chimichurri. But look at my board. You can see how dry my board is. When you over chop herbs on a board, 
all of a sudden the goodness is on the board and I want the goodness inside this chimichurri. From there, a nice season of salt, pepper, and then the garlic. I don't want big shards of garlic, so take a microplane and just grate that garlic. And what that does, you'll see, it just almost purees that garlic. That's what I want, my garlic puree. Take a spoon, take that off and put that in. So that sort of disintegrates and moves away and literally hides a little touch of smoked paprika, a little touch of red wine vinegar, and then my extra virgin olive oil. Okay, that goes in, let that mix up. Now, we don't want this too oily, okay? Remember, the ribeye steak, it's rich, it's sumptuous. There's everything you want from a steak. Now, mix that together. And then, crack the seasoning and finish that, finally, with a nice squeeze of lemon juice. That brings that steak and just literally lifts it up. Extra virgin olive oil on top of those herbs. And now, those herbs are bleeding. Now. When it comes to the canvas, every chef's dream, that's your canvas there. So I've got a beautiful mashed potato that is finished with grated goat's cheese and just generously pile that on there. And then look, take your spoon, just make a little well in there, just a little well. Take your chimichurri and just announce to the mashed potatoes that this chimichurri is coming and you fill up this beautiful little pocket of magic. Now for the dream. I always like to roll my steak in its resting juices and look at it. That is an absolute slice of heaven. There's your bone. That's your rib cap. That's the rib eye there. So I'm gonna slice across, come down into the bone and look at that. Talk about give the dog a bone. Your dog will be happy for the next 50 years if you got to munch on that bone. Beautiful. The ribeye, look at the grain. Slice with it, don't slice against it. Don't slice this too thinly either. Just about a centimeter and a half in between. It's rested. I've retained all that beautiful moisture in my steak. And then look, lift that up. I like to put that little sear on top there and then open that up and just sit my steak on top beautifully. And now for the finishing touches. Take your chimichurri and just allow that to start cascading down across that ribeye. And look, just. And there we have a beautiful roasted Stunning bone-in ribeye with a delicious chimichurri, all thanks to Hexlad.